Welcome to AV Educate. My name is Omar Colon, the creator of the AV Tech Talks podcast edition. I'm here today with, with our special guest, Leland Best, and our co-host, Austin Jackson. What's Go ahead, Austin. going on, guys? What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here. Welcome. We have a special, special guest for you guys tonight, a special feature presentation where we're going to be di deep diving into um, some s virtual switchers. We're going to be uh, doing a little bit of web-based software switching, getting a little bit of deep diving into this conversation. So without further ado, I wanted to actually introduce our special feature guest for tonight. He's the owner and operator of Best Conceptions LLC, live streaming specialist with over 10 years of experience in broadcasting and video production. Um, this guy is also a, a writer. In 2018, he came out with the Amazon bestseller of Conversations Behind the Mic. Uh, he has Best Live Guide. So much to offer to you guys tonight. So without further ado, I wanted to welcome our guest, Leland Bess. Guys, what's going on? Man, it's great to be here. I can't I can't say enough about what AV Educate's been doing lately. So I want to thank you guys for having me here. I'll always a Happy to have you here. Happy to have you here, man. So, so we're gonna rock so down some websites today. Let's yes, do sir. It. yes, sir. I'm excited to see what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna excited do. for the viewers out there and uh to get their feedback and then bring it in and so we can all communicate and and, uh, and learn together. Well, I'm going to shrink myself down for a little bit. I'm going to have Omar put me center stage here while I flip cameras over. I'm going to first point you guys over to the website that I run. So I'm just kind of showing myself here for a second while I go virtual and become a little guy in the corner using vMix software, by the way, coming into StreamYard. So if you're one of those folks out here thinking, I got to make a decision whether I'm going to go with StreamYard or OBS or vMix or Wirecast or all these other websites out there like Stage 10 and uh, Go Lightstream. We're going to go through all those tonight. You don't have to sacrifice one over the other. You can take them both to the stage. So that's what I'm doing here today. I'm simply bringing in a desktop share with vMix into StreamYard thanks to Omar's account. So we're in here streaming out to Facebook using a basic API connection to the software. So we're gonna show you some other sites to do the same thing, but I first wanna to touch on the one we're in right now, which is StreamYard.com. If you're not familiar with this site, it's because it's not that it's not that new. It's only been around for a couple of years now. Um, Gage over there, who's been running this show, came into the live streaming scene kind of on a whim him and his college buddy day dan there developed this software themselves just the two of them and in doing so they kind of upset the market because at the time there was another contender that was the big dog on the stage and that was b.live originally known as blive.tv this was the the player that came out after if you remember meerkat if you remember Blab.im, these were some of the originators when it came to video live streaming on the internet in open source using WebRTC, coming through the browser and having everything composited inside Chrome or Firefox rather than a separate software like vMix or Wirecast. It was all done inside the browser and broadcast out to the web. Daniel and Safrir over at BeLive Got a little worried when Gage showed up because Gage showed up into their streams one day in their Facebook group and they were having problems over at BeLive. Some of the stuff was a little glitchy back a few years ago. We had that problem quite a bit with WebRTC because it would be one of those things where you could be streaming great and all of a sudden your audio would go out, your video would start flipping out, your your you'd get all this echo in the feed and you wouldn't know how to control it because there really wasn't a way to. Gage found a way to fix a lot of those problems, and he showed up and said, hey, if you guys don't like what you see here at BeLive, come on over and check out StreamYard. Well, it formed a huge competition between these two, and it was good for the industry because it allowed the users to voice their opinions on what software features they really needed. So let's take a peek real quick at what BeLive has done since then, because BeLive has taken a second step in a second generation of software. StreamYard continues to globally advance the features that they have. And if you're familiar with when they started, StreamYard was a small four square platform like BeLive started out as. But you could switch like he's been doing here during his broadcast. Omar can switch by the screen settings you see there on that little video presentation uh, in front of me. Let me see if I can get my mouse to show up here. Sorry, I don't have my mouse out right to my head. Yes, you should be able to see that. Can you see my mouse here? Okay. Down here at the bottom is his ability to switch 
with the software, the different formatted layouts that show up during the broadcast. He can bring in guests with a simple link. He can bring in videos. He can bring in overlays like you see there for the comments, which we'll be using later. There's other sites that do that as well. And so does vMix. So there's an option and a plethora of ways to go. Now, I'm just showing you a lower third that I use for one of my clients, John Peasy, who happens to be an America's Got Talent star from back on season seven. Uh, we'll be doing a broadcast out here soon, very soon, actually, on Facebook. So we'll be incorporating, he uses StreamYard, honestly, John Peasy does. And you may be able to catch his show over at uh, the ventriloquist site that he has. He's a ventriloquist, a mentalist. Uh, you know, he, he just loves getting out here and doing video himself. This is great for him because he doesn't need a producer to do his one-off show that he likes to interview people on. That's what makes these sites so perfect for people that don't have a production team. You can come out here and just jump on camera, do your screen captures, add a video, add some graphics, and you're good to go. And then you also have the ability to stream to multiple locations at a time. I can't log into the back end, and we asked Omar if he'd want to screen share the reverse side, the actual user side of uh, StreamYard. We're probably going to get a little bit of an infinity effect on the video, but I just wanted people to see the internal workings of what goes on, on side, inside StreamYard Studio. So, Omar, since this is your account, you want to kind of run down with the folks real quick on what you use in the system while you're doing a broadcast? Yeah, so right now what we're doing is you can see I'm commenting on the right-hand side here primarily with you guys out in the community. Uh, and as we do that, I can bring you guys up into the, the stream, which is really why we, we started using this, right? So you can see myself bringing up on the stream side here. Uh, we have banners that we've created for different things. You can see the ticker at the bottom here that's going on. Uh, scrolling here, I've got different ones for different presentations. Uh, I also have brands here on this side. So you can see, again, the logo, the defaults for the naming and stuff. Uh, overlays, which we haven't really used too much of. That video clip you guys saw in the beginning here, I uploaded it to to here. It plays automatically. It's click. It's literally been click, uh, click based for me on my end. Um, the backgrounds as well. We have some backgrounds here that we've been using. Uh, we change them up as we go, and it's happened on on live uh, on the fly with you guys. You can see down here, I've got uh, myself here where it says remove. That's me. I can remove myself in the stream if I do that. The audio would get cut off. I have Austin Jackson as well on the other end here. He came in. We have Leland Best here, who's actually streaming back into his own camera here with the vMix side. And then you can see yep. my screen share, which unfortunately has infinity, so I apologize for that. But I can remove that and add that in, and, I'll, and you'll see me click on it. I can also change the viewership uh, here, so I can go to the uh, – I can actually remove that for a second. Oh, if I remove that, I'll take it away. But if I go to three, uh, three yeah. view here, obviously this is my account, so I'm the primary. <clears throat> but then you can see everything I'm going on over here. I can screen share just this piece here. You get the infinity on all that. I can do it as well as this, which is the one I preferred to use because you can see all of us here. Um, and then as well, we have a private chat side so you can see on our side what we're saying and what we're talking about. Uh, and broadcast here, I can change out. If I have multiple accounts, I can change it out here. Um, but primarily, I'm just monitoring the, uh, the stream streamyard side right now. Um, is there anything I missed, Leland, that I should cover here uh, for the guys? No, that was Perfect. That's basically all I wanted you to do is give a rundown of how simple the workflow is when you're using software like this. So if you want to go back to the screen, we'll pull this back in to show the comparison to some of the others. Because, because this wasn't the first site to come out, they, they kind of capitalized on all the feature sets that some of us actually who were in streaming over on Meerkat and Blab started to incorporate into those sites. We were like, hey, we would love to be able to do this. We want to be able to play a YouTube video. We want to be able to share our desktop. We want to be able to switch users. We want to drop them in with a simple link. These were things that didn't exist five years ago. And thanks to a lot of us who were in the industry pushing buttons and saying, hey, we need this stuff. This is, Kate, it's possible. We can do this. It's easy to build if we just set our mind to it. They did, and it helped really push things along over the last several years. So what came of that is just an influx, an influx, I should say, of other sites just like it. I've worked very closely with Stage 10 TV over the past five years. I actually helped them get some of their angel investors involved so that they could keep this uh, process that comes out of Canada. This is primarily located, I believe their uh, Dave is actually located in Toronto, I believe, and some several others, Jeff Greenway, a big Scrabble guy. They, they do Scrabble tournaments all around the country in Canada. So this is a very similar setup. I'm gonna disappear for just a second so you can get a better idea of the internal workings of this platform. Um, I could take you to BeLive, but I'm going to take you to them after the fact because they just came out with a secondary edition, and it's not going to be comparable to what they had in the first edition. Um, with Stage 10, 
This software is a little bit different um, in regards to how it functions. And you can come in on a camera with a microphone or just a screen share with a microphone, or you can skip that idea altogether when you come in and just decide, well, I'll figure it out when I get in there. Uh, you could just use this to bring in other people and not even put yourself on camera at all. Now you can see here right away, a much different layout. You don't see the main screen so much, you know, in contrast to the other stuff that you did in uh, StreamYard. But the feeds are fed in over here on the corner. You can copy the invite link and share it with a guest so they can come in right away. I can add a local cam, which I've been having trouble with on the site tonight since we started the broadcast. So I'm just going to add a screen share element here for now so that you guys can see how it actually functions. And then in that screen share, we'll go ahead and make it look a little better in the end. I'm just going to share a brand logo here. So once you have it in there, you can just drag it into the stage. Okay, And you can see at the top there are a lot of the same framing ability that uh, Omar just showed you guys with StreamYard with the several different layouts, side-by-side -side layouts, three-way layouts, etc. Now, I can add in graphics and videos and audio files over here on the other side. They actually give you a sample of assets that you can take down onto your machine and use to play around with to get an idea how they work. So let's go ahead and do that. It's just going to download a zip file with content for graphics that I could drag up in here and use as demo purposes. But basically, these little boxes below are for four open audio channels that you could have playing in the background while the graphics are on the screen. Looks like their download isn't working right now. Um, we're going to have to pass on that. But basically, you just come in here, and if you need to learn more, it spells everything out for you. Everything they have is connected to a nice little, you know, frequently asked questions database. And what you'll do is drop any lower third overlays into this box, any full screen overlays into this box, any watermark overlays into this box, and any of your audio channels for your guests into all of these so that they stay live during screen shares, et cetera. The thing that's cool about this particular account, now I'm, I'm demonstrating an enterprise account, which I happen to have been gifted by Stage 10 as one of their early promoters and, and help them help build this system basically. I'm connected to, like a lot of the other multi-streaming platforms, several locations on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. I can do up to 15 locations here on stage10.tv with the enterprise account. And it's limited, of course, in the lower end accounts. That's how they scale these softwares. You're going to get the lesser feature set for the lesser price, maybe $15, $20, $25 a month. And then it goes up to anywhere into the $999 range if you want to go there. It depends on how enterprise you want to get with the ability to broadcast. And also, with some of these, the ability to save recordings. Now, StreamYard just recently opened up VOD or Video On Demand, which is their ability to come out here and save software or save video files, sorry. And I realized just for a second there, I wasn't even on screen for you guys. Um, in order for you to have the playback ability and let your guests who maybe missed the live broadcast they wanted to attend actually see that broadcast, Facebook's fine, YouTube's fine, but what if, you've got content that can't be delivered on an open source social media site because of you know copyright issues or things like that. That's where VOD comes in. That's where being able to save your video files on the platform that you have, that you're broadcasting from, and being able to share a link to that content to your viewers later and say, hey, if you missed it, go check out the replay. It's available here. Um, and it'll be at the quality that you broadcast at. One thing you have to remember when you stream out of these sites, if you use the API to connect to Facebook, for a long time, they wouldn't even allow you to stream past 720p. Now, in some accounts, you can get 1080p access, but you don't get that back from Facebook if you try to download the video. You can if you scrape it with certain softwares that are available out there that'll download Facebook video files, but they don't come with the audio either. You have to mash them together. You'll get 360p back from Facebook. So always remember that when you're using these softwares that attach to the API. If you're streaming off other software like OBS or vMix or Wirecast through RTMP into, BMix or into Facebook, you have a better chance of getting higher quality video back in the Facebook downloaders, but you're not necessarily still going to be able to get that quality back from Facebook itself unless you do a screen capture of the video production you did on Facebook. So let's move to the next one. Any questions at all on any of that stuff? If you guys are just following along and let me roll, that's fine. I'll just keep on rolling. Um, Be live. 
as I said, used to be BeLive.tv, a huge Facebook group. If you want to join a bunch of streamers who are having a ball out there, you can see this, 677 million engaged viewers. And actually, I'm in the way of the other content number there, 487,000 streams created. Their Facebook group alone, let's just head over to BeLive TV, I believe should show up right away. 32,000 people like this app that came out, but if you head over to, and that was Owen, by the way, I'll talk to Austin about him in just a minute. This is their video community, all right? And, oh, this is their community. I'm sorry, I don't have their group. Let me get over to my group because I want you guys to see this. Um, I can remember how to use the new Facebook app. <laughs> We're all trying to get a grip on how this thing works anymore. Uh, let's see, so groups, here we go. Let's get to B Live. There's B Live and B Live Partner. B Livers is actually the name of this group. And I highly recommend for anyone, look at this, 25,000 members. And that's only since 2016, I believe, was when B Live was first brought on the scene. So if you ever want to go locate where all the Facebook live streamers are at right now, you're going to find about 25,000. I'm over here on B Live. So go take a look at that. I can't recommend it enough. Oh, you're not seeing it over here. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong screen share. Here is the Beelivers group. Um, it's under groups, the Beelivers, and it's on Facebook. If you send an invite, I'm sure Zafir or Daniel would be happy to accommodate. If there's questions you can't answer, you tell them Leland sent you, and I'm sure Daniel or Zafir will let you in. Uh, this software is based out of Israel. They've been broadcasting hey, Leland, Leland. from there through, yeah, yeah. Hey, Leland, so there's a, there seems to be an echo now that you went to this page. I got gotcha. you. I think the uh, the Facebook is on there or something. Very possible. Get rid of it. It's possible we're playing Should back at the same time. Yep, I'm just making sure I'm not playing back somewhere else. How's it now? I'm looking to make sure. I don't go. We're, good now. we're good. It's gone now. You're good now? Yep. I think I had a Facebook tab of this broadcast from maybe educating. No worries. No worries. I open. I'll take you back to solo. Well, yeah, hey, by the way, just let the guys know that if they have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the comments. Feel free to drop them in the comments. We, we want to get engaged with the community. Most certainly. And I can understand when I'm going through a lot of content like this, it's hard to gather enough thought maybe to think of a question you might want to ask. And that's fine. We can you know wrap it up a little early and let you guys ask your questions at the end as well. So back to BeLive. I, I want to take you inside BeLive, but what I'm going to take you is actually – First off, to the pricing platform. So you get an idea of how these systems work. Just like StreamYard, there's a free version. You can go out here and use it a certain number of times a month and be able to broadcast maybe a certain length of time. Sometimes it's 20-minute or 40-minute broadcast. Sometimes it's so many shows a week or so many shows a month before they're going to want you to pay at least $20 a month to get the full feature set. These are always cheaper if you pay it for it annually. You usually save 20 to 30% if you do it that way. Um, I recommend it because, you know, if you're going to spend money on a system like this, it, let me let me put it this way. I always recommend to people, find your workflow, okay? If you don't find it in, in something like vMix or Wirecast or OBS, then that's not for you. The software system idea probably won't work the best on your computer. Try these out first until you get a grip on how video workflow works and how audio playback works. That way you get a little less tension <laughs> while you're building out your set because a lot of it's done for you. A lot of the compositing is done for you. You don't have to think about layering and all that stuff. It's all just button clicks. And then when you get comfortable with producing work, think about adding software to the mix and going with something else and trying to figure out a real truly you know, live production software switching software that might cost in in range anywhere from $4.99 to $2,099. It, it's hard to say what you'll pay for software switching nowadays. Um, a few others on the market, but we're going to dig in here real quick, uh, probably for 10 minutes into BeLive. I want you guys to see this account. Uh, I was granted this account by Zafir so that I could demonstrate this because I am in a, uh, one of the affiliates over to BeLive, so I want to make that clear to everyone here. I'm also somewhat uh, looking to become an affiliate over at Stage 10, but not at this current time, and I'm also an affiliate at StreamYard.com. So just in case anybody follows any links you see on my website, so that's where they're going to take you. So you can see here a little bit like uh, StreamYard maybe. 
And there's a reason for that, because I think what we've discovered was BeLive was feeling a little taken over by the StreamYard um, pull, because they pulled a lot of people from that group, believe it or not. They have 25,000 people, but I guarantee you, if you go to the StreamYard group over on Facebook, you're going to find about 10,000 there, and a lot of those came from BeLive. Reason being, BeLive wasn't all that stable when it first came out, and most of these can have glitchy issues come up through the WebRTC instances that are created in Chrome. I tend to recommend using Firefox for broadcasting, even though a lot of these sites will say, well, we're, we're tweaked for Chrome, we recommend Chrome. Yeah, that's fine, but Chrome doesn't necessarily pay a lot of attention to the idea of broadcasters, okay? They don't really care what we're doing with WebRTC to the extent that we need it to work in certain ways. So we find the ability to switch between cameras and audio devices much simpler in Firefox with the pull down for that little camera up top. You see this little camera here? This is what used to be in Chrome, the way you would switch your camera out. You would just come here and just drop this drop down and say, okay, I don't want that camera, I want this camera. It doesn't work anymore. It's never worked for the last 20 versions of Chrome. Why they shut this down, we have no clue, but it's available in Firefox where you just simply switch cameras and audio devices on the fly. You have to manage them. And with these websites comes one issue. If you lock in a camera on a website when you first go to it, it's going to ask you up in the corner like it did just a second here on BeLive when I came in. It asks to use my camera and my audio device, okay? And that's something you have to approve. Once you do that, it's locked in the settings as a cookie inside Chrome. And that's this 443 port that's used for all video and you know conversation back and forth through WebRTC. You see, I have one for Stage 10, BeLive, StreamYard, Melon App, and Facebook. These are all something that you have to delete if you run into problems with the inability to make your camera connect. You know the camera's there, you see the light coming on, but it won't get the camera because maybe another software is using it, or you attach the wrong camera to the software when you first opened it, now you don't want to use that camera anymore, and it keeps defaulting to that camera, and you don't even own that camera anymore. You're like, what the? I can't get this to work. Just go over here and delete the cookie. And when you delete that cookie, what it does is this, if I take that cookie out and delete it, now if I head back over to BeLive and I reload this app because I'm still, well, I'm actually still in it over here, so let me close it. And I reload the app and I go to go back in again, it should ask me to use their cam to use the camera again. See, this is the back end of the system. This will show me my reference link because once you get a BeLive account, you're an affiliate. So you can come out here and share this with people and get credit. You get a $25 or $20 for each friend you actually recommend. And if they sign up, you make money. So these sites are typical. Not all of them have affiliate programs, but many of them do. So always check into it. If you're a big streamer and you have some influence and you want to make some extra coin, get involved with this community. Get involved with these communities and let people know how it works. Show them how it works. Do demo videos. Have links to your affiliate. You can make some cash. So just something to consider. Now, if I want to come in here again and do this, it should tell me it needs the camera. There it is. So it shows up in the corner at BeLive TV wants to use your camera. So you have to allow that. Now it's taking by default the first camera it finds in most cases, and that should be the hardware camera. But if you've attached another camera to it that you no longer use, you're probably going to get an error and your camera's not going to work. So you're going to want to go back and do like I just showed you. Okay, same principles here. You open up a camera. You can add a guest with a short link. You can add a desktop share just in a different format. Uh, you can add media from your Facebook page or a link from a media link or upload media to the site. They now have added live sales. Now, you have to ask for this and you have to pay extra for the higher-end account to get it but they have links to actually do sales through the live video while you're broadcasting. Something only a few of them. Stage 10 is another one that's doing it as well with the Rosy TV app that they've just come out with. So they have widgets here for thermometers, days in quarantine. I thought this one was kind of cool. You can set the number of days you've been in your house over this whole quarantine thing. Uh, text on the screen, you can add any text you want. You can hide it or show it. Uh, it can be a ticker at the bottom, or you can have an agenda that actually allows you to set up a list of items that you can bring up as you broadcast and say, okay, I wanna cover this item now and I'm gonna cover this item next. So your little agenda pops up on the screen to where you can say, okay, now we're gonna cover this idea. The next topic is the appearance and background. The next topic is the UI for the cameras and da da da. So it gives you that ability to pre-program your event a little bit 
get these graphics put together. And with the same way with StreamYard, you've got branding here as well, background graphics, themes, logos, backgrounds. So if you want to swap that barcode up there or QR code for your actual you know, logo for your show, you can do that. So whichever way you want to put it together. Uh, same as the bottom before with uh, StreamYard, you bring in a guest. Your main camera is going to be occupied here. If it's on another app, it's going to tell you. And then you can bring any other person that's in that app by simply dropping them up onto the stream. And it's going to add one box for each person. So it goes from one to four. And then you can flip through those layouts just like you did before uh, with some other ones, I believe, available. Unless they dropped a few. It looks like they might have. And then you decide where you want to stream to. So you can edit your destination. You can stream to Facebook, YouTube. You can schedule your streams, and I believe that they should have multi-streaming coming very soon. I don't think you can do it just yet, uh, like you can on StreamYard. Okay, any questions? Because I'm ready to go to the next one. I don't hear any. <laughs> hey, <laughs> right, so I don't apparently, hear just a heads up for everybody involved, we, me and Austin, obviously, we demoed this out last week. We had no problems. I'm not sure if it's because I'm using Chrome versus Firefox or whatever it is. I am seeing comments and everything in the Facebook side, but I'm not seeing them here. And the ones that I have posted here are not posting on the Facebook side. So there's a little bit of a problem on our end, and I apologize to the to the audience for that. But um, so far, I've gotten uh, no questions yet, but tons of positive feedback. Uh, they're loving the behind the scenes of all these platforms. Uh, Ed Wallace, a great look, great BTS look uh, look of the Streamyard workflow. Justin Butler said um, everything looks good. We're dropping a couple of frames uh, somewhere. Um, okay. Uh, Henry Carlos yeah, says, Thanks for the uh, Jason, Lynn, uh, why are you guys so amazing? And uh, John, <laughs> well, that's for, always nice to hear. so I've got a couple comments here. I can't bring you guys. Was in. that John Preto you said? Was that John yeah. Preto you said said that? I did I say that. John, nice to see you here, buddy. John, John is the grandfather of live streaming or the godfather, I call him, of live streaming. The first man to put a rocket or put a camera on a rocket over in Vegas. Um, nice. He's been wow. streaming <laughs> for 20, 26 years, I believe, John's been streaming. So if you want to ever talk with someone who was there when it started, that's the man to get in touch with. Guys, so right. John, um, you might be hitting up John, but I, I don't want to take up too much of time, Liam. <laughs> I just let the audience know no, we we're having some difficulties on, on this one. We'll adjust for the next one. I yep. apologize for that. But um, keep the questions coming in regardless, because if anything, we can always mention them to Leland so that he can answer them on air for you guys. So keep them coming in regardless, and we'll just do our best to connect you. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Going to the next one then. As far as one that's been around for a while, and this one has been created by some of the OGs out there. And if you don't know what an OG is, I feel for you. But in regards to this platform, this is, put the, let me take you over to who they are first, because I think it's really cool. They, they have the same team culture that I do, which is to be able to allow storytellers to grow their communities and, and everybody's got a story to tell. That's why most of these platforms exist is because the people who created them felt Man, we all got a voice. Everybody can get a camera now. Everybody can get a microphone. Let's get these voices out there. And that's why these sites continue to prosper. The career story itself and the culture of these folks over here and who they are is kind of amazing. Um, this team at GoLightStream.com, which is it's kind of an unorthodox name because it was originally a different name. I, I can't even, it evades me right now, but... They went through a huge branding change and there is a lightstream.com, which has nothing to do with Go Lightstream. So be careful when you're looking for this app. It is golightstream.com. These guys come from the likes of Steel Series. If you've ever heard of the wireless headsets that are out there for gamers, Machinima, Open Broadcasting Software, or OBS. Some of the original team members are actually here and helped build this platform. Uh, Major League Gaming, ESL, Beyond Gaming, and even the old school names like Got Frag, if you guys that goes back. Okay. If you know who got frag is, you're an old gamer. Um, this group of guys, I interviewed Stu Grubbs back. I was had it be four years ago now. And this was as the product were evolving. He wasn't tied to mixer yet at the time and they didn't have their cloud system. And I think they've recently broken away from mixer with all the stuff that's going on over there. So I don't recommend it for that aspect at all, but their studio platform is really cool. And I'm still looking into their new cloud streaming platform that just came out. They're primarily focused for gamers, but what's really cool about this setup is that it's totally organic and you can build it any way you like. So let me give 
the demonstrator here the ability to show you what goes on inside Go Lightstream. This is much more like a standard software switcher when it comes right down to it. You have the same layering abilities, you have the same scaling abilities, you have the same connection abilities that you have on a lot of these. It does not multi-stream at this time, but you can stream to individual channels at different bit rates and at different uh, resolutions. You can bring in text overlays, you can bring in branding overlays, you can bring in callers with a single short link like we do in StreamYard and BeLive. The stream is fully uh, controlled on the interface, just like most of these others. So let me head into the actual interface myself so you can see mine. So you decide which way you wanna go, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. I always recommend for people who want the best quality and best stability to stream to YouTube. So pick an account. You know, where are you going to brand that account from? It's going to get its access like normal through the API. And this is now what used to be, obviously, a free subscription account. They want you to pay 8 bucks a month for the gamer and 25 bucks a month for the creator, which is a little more advanced. You can get a little more frame rate. You can get up to 1080p, up to seven remote guests. Our TMP source is coming in from other locations as well. And it looks like they may allow you to start multi-streaming. Nope. These are, well, they're all RTMP feeds, so it may allow you to multi-stream those. So we can allow the camera feeds, but what basically happened here is I've been connected to this account for years now. And if I wanted to play with it anymore, I have to pay for it. And that's typical of what's going on nowadays because these systems all came out just like this one, okay? The Melon. This is a new one, melonapp.com. If you look at the pricing on here, $0 a month, four months streaming, up to one guest, two branded overlays, and a branded watermark. That's kind of the typical rundown on these SAS sites or software as a service sites that allow you to pay monthly because they're generating enough income on that end for their membership that they can allow these free accounts to exist. Obviously, always cheaper when you go annual versus monthly. You're talking five bucks a month normally. Now, add that up. 20 bucks a month for 12 months, that's, you know, pricey. That's a few hundred dollars when it comes down to it. $25 a month, it's going to cost you 600 bucks. Well, not 600, I'm sorry. Way off on the numbers. <laughs> well, like 300 bucks. So if you take that and consider the cost of actual streaming software, all right, that's where you want to take that second think and say, do I want to spend that much a year? Or do I want to drop that much and feel the pain now and just have my software that I can stream anywhere at any time without relying on someone else's design build to work for me? It's all about workflow. It's all about what feels best for you, what's most comfortable. Try all these. Go out there and try every one of them. If you want to even play with a really weekend one, go to Restream. Restream has an account. A lot of people know Restream as multicasting. You come out, you go to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of them at the same time. That's only part of it. They, oh, now they're going to give me the mic. Who built this? I want to know who made that thing. Um, they now have a studio inside Restream. So if you enter the live studio over here in the corner, where that takes you is to their interface, which is the same thing. Allow the camera, allow the mic. And now you have a few features, not as many. You've got the dashboard for the multi-streaming that's still here available to you at all times. Now it's incorporated in with this. So you come in, you add a camera, you can add a guest, you can do a screen share, same type of single drop link guests. Um, and you can actually play a local video on this one, but that one costs you. You can stream for free on Restream up to, I think it's three accounts or so for nothing. You just come out here and play with it. Um, and that includes the studio features that you see here. If it's X'd out, you can't do it. Okay. So I don't think you can do a screen share here. If you want to do recordings, you got to pay. Okay. So just one of those things. Every feature set out here is going to be limited based on what it thinks is worth the most to you. That's what they do. Each site's going to be different. Some people are going to charge you more for storage of your VOD. Some people are going to start charge you more for multicasting. Some people are going to charge you more just to have extra guests, just like vMix does. They charge you more money to get more guests in the software. So that's what you really have to look for. A couple others along the lines of Restream.io. Caster.io is another one out there that you can look at. Very similar to Restream, but it doesn't have the full-blown studio like you would see in Restream. It does have the ability 
to bring in a camera, a webcam, which is good because you can schedule events and do you know a, a simulcast stream out of here. So if I wanted to go live from here, I could, but the only way I can do a studio per se out of this software is to click on the webcam here. It's gonna do the same allow access as it does on any of the others. Now it says the camera was forbidden. It's because it's being used right now in vMix. So I can't access it. That's the only reason that one's shutting down. So one more, switchboard.live used to be Joycaster, J-O-I-C-A-S-T-E-R.io. It existed uh, about the time of Meerkat and before Blab died, this was still around as uh, Joycaster. It was used by a lot of people to multicast at the time. They've come up with a much more elaborate system now and you'll see that in their price structure. <laughs> um, pretty pricey if you ask me to just have around for Colab, but this is intended for multiple users within a workflow. So if you wanted to have a bunch of people building up streams together, knowing what's going on in the back is collaborative and that you have a full team of you know audio, video, tech guys, gaffers, whatever you've got going on and you need people in the back end chatting with each other and being able to work together, this is a site to go take a look at because it's much different with regards to the other encoder workflows. It has a lot more resources to it. Um, I could go through them all, but I wouldn't even be able to have the time to spend with everybody here. It's more about engagement with your team members than it is really anything else. Go check out some of their case studies and you'll get a better understanding what I'm talking about, why it costs so much. Um, let's go into one other mode and that is CDN broadcasting. Oh wait, we got one other software I missed. Okay, Logitech. If you own a Logitech camera, you, you're kind of lucky. You have a bonus software available out there called Logitech Capture. It has gone through a lot of iterations recently. I'm actually going to pull up mine uh, real quick. Just hold on a second here. I think I can. <clears throat> it's here somewhere. All right, hold on one second. So this software was created in replace of one of the old Logitech drivers that were put together for the webcam. You can't even access any longer through Windows. What used to be um, their control software for the, for the camera itself, okay? That just doesn't exist anymore. It's hard to find. If you can find it anywhere, uh, it's gonna be probably in some back alley um, file storage system somewhere. Anyway, these only work with any of the Logitech series cameras, you can capture displays off of any number of your displays. You can bring in window captures. You can change frame rates and exposures. You have the ability to zoom the lens and pan the lens of the Logitech camera, control the focus and white balance. This was all stuff that was available in the original zoom or original camera settings app that was on Windows 10 and no longer exists. Uh, Chroma key is another feature here, along with some other advanced settings for flipping your sources around. They have a couple of different display formats, picture in pictures. You can see the camera sources are just showing is not available right now. Um, but this layout is just a couple of different layouts you can use. You can also record in house, take snapshots, and then come over and grab some of the cool screen effects, um, text overlays, colored text, alignments of text, backgrounds and filters for your video. Uh, border colors, transitions, which you can actually pan between or transition between two different cameras if you have them on here. You can add uh, several mic sources if you needed to. And there's also some short key functions on here that you can set up so that you can fly off on the keyboard. Um, once you, If you do log in and create an account on Logitech, you get some extra bonus features is what I hear. I haven't actually logged in to find out what those are yet. So we're going to have to do that soon. And you control your brightness and camera gamma over here on the other side. So that gives you a little idea how that one runs. That one you download onto your machine. It runs on your PC or Mac, I believe is both. It should. Let me take a look here real quick. Uh, nope, it's just Windows only by the looks of it. So sorry for all you Mac users out there. All right, I guess I can't help the Mac users today. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and I think last but not least would be the CDN platforms. Uh, I'm working with Greg Ellis over at decast.com, which is connected to the Acame CDN or Content Delivery Network. If you're not familiar with Acame, uh, they also run the backbone to Wowza, if I'm correct. Uh, Acame, known as you see here, is kind of the cloud server system that is the core backbone to a lot of the content delivery that's done 
in video on the internet, basically. Akamai is one of the largest out there. They are very expensive, but they shell out a lot of their services to the smaller brands like Wowza and DeCast, and they use their servers to provide services like we mentioned. Now, with these, what we, I think, saw, whoa, that's their video, not mine. <laughs> um, I saw that change. I thought that was something I did. In their particular case, you create channels. And in these channels, you give access to users. And in that, you have pay gates or paywalls and VOD systems that allow you to create subscription formats so that you can actually have users log into the system. And I can give you a quick rundown of that one. Let's head over and go ahead and log into DeCast. Uh, I also have an enterprise account over here. So again, feature sets here are limited for the lesser priced accounts. They start at like $19 a month for a single channel account. In this case, I'm running channels for several different broadcasts. So we have my own Nerd World TV, uh, Three Ring Circus, some stuff that we did for replay just as a celebration of life for someone who was actually a former governor of Texas had passed. And we did a celebration of life video that continues to play on now, even after his death, so that that VOD is always available for anyone that wants to watch it. We have uh, Victor from Office Hours, the CTO of AT&T, former CTO of AT&T, uh, now plays the saxophone on Facebook Live. I've asked him to go ahead and try this channel out for a little bit. And License to Rant with John Peasy. We're going to be running his channel through here so that if people want to go see the channel, they can brand it. They can set it up and they actually come in. Now, I haven't created any packages on this platform, but you could create silver, gold, platinum. $5 a month for all the videos that you've already created that people could go back and watch again later. Um, and as far as the actual view of like the channel itself for License to Rant, uh, we're going to be having basically a quick preview board pane here to just show what it is. This is an HTML5 player that's available at all times for anybody to use. So if you let's say we're broadcasting out to Facebook and here at the same time, which you can do, um, this would be an archive that would be saved in VOD and would be on a replay after that as an encore presentation. And then it lives on. So you always have it. It doesn't matter whether you have copyrighted music or not, because this is a secured system. It's not going through social media per se. This is a player that just pops up in your Chrome browser when the video is ready to go, it's ready to go. And you don't have to log into a social media site to see it. You don't have to worry about that copyright infringement because there is no TOS here. It's just an enclosed system. It's a private, proprietized system. And you get a lot more flexibility this way. And you can, if you have an account like this, like an enterprise account, you can charge people for the channels you've created for them and supply their production process for them. They just can log in and maybe change graphics now and then or change the pricing on the VOD, whatever you want. So it depends on how you handle it. Um, really depends on what market you're in. So if you look at my potential upgrades here, <laughs> just to give you guys an idea, this is how it works. You get a $19 a month per channel type availability with 100 gigs of bandwidth, 300 hours of viewing time, 20 gigs of storage and email support. And then you have transcoding credits, which if you want to transcode to other devices requiring other formats, you can do that as well from here. And when you go up, I mean, the prices just continue to go up. I'm a little disturbed at times when I see these prices because I was there when everything was free. I was, and look at me, I'm sweating. Oh my God, it's hot in here. Um, I was doing this stuff beta when a lot of these sites were first created. And we got out there and we tested and we ran tests and we burned through these sites just to see which ones we could break. And we broke a lot of them. Actually, there's some of them don't exist anymore <laughs> um, because they just didn't work right. Go Live With was one of them because they were still using Flash Media instead of WebRTC. Couldn't keep up. It just didn't work. So um, sites have come and gone. Huza.io was a huge platform that came out after Blab got picked up by uh, Kickstarter. So now that platform has been completely built into Kickstarter when they do their broadcast. I got one more for you. If you're on the edge and you want to go play on the edge a little, uh, a site I used to broadcast that a lot and I left only because of the content. We're not going to get any, you know, I'm not going to get into what the content can be, but you can see under the interests of me here, um, they do have a lot of not safe for work stuff over here. Just want you guys to know that um, it's one of those sites that as a great interface, it's a four square interface. It does screen sharing. It does a lot of other things. It does multicast out to several websites as well, like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, it's a 
pretty decent community. I know a lot of people out there. Kinte's out there. Kinte Ferguson's broadcasting. Um, Dr. Um, Vibe is broadcasting out of Canada over here. Some sexual content to keep those, you know, interested in that type of thing. It's not like you might think, but it's podcast stuff. So video podcasts, they have a connection also to, um, what's that, uh, what's that site everybody gets paid? Patreon. So you do have a link to connect your Patreon account over here at Get Vocal and actually get paid for your broadcast and have a gate entryway there as well. So that's about all I got, guys. I could probably throw out some others. Oh, melon. We didn't cover the melon. Just to be honest, I haven't used it yet. <laughs> so this one just came out, guys. I just got my account the other day. It looks like you can log in with any of these. So I don't like to usually log in with this. I like to use my email in most cases. But um, just to get you guys up to speed on what this does, it's a really fast way to go live. They say four clicks in your life. So if you want to go try it for free, simply go over to melonapp.com. It's free of all the clutter. It looks a lot more like Logitech Capture software, really, when you get inside of it. It's very simplex. It's not very graphic oriented. There's just a few buttons to push. You got your screen share. You got your guest link. And that's it. So um, very feature less, but very easy to use. So I'm going to cover up my eye. I feel like I'm like burn through this shirt i almost want to go change shirts now real quick so no no, no. i do want to pump it out again I, I thought it was the design of the shirt i didn't even know the difference yeah yeah, yeah. you call it out i thought i was part of the show <laughs> yeah I, I work until i sweat and then it's all over with right it's hot in here man i got i got all kinds of computers running in here and i like to turn the fan off so you don't hear it on the mic so i start to sweat a little right right so there, I, got, I got i got a couple of questions for you um, I'll yeah. start off with the first one that I'm seeing. And, and if I miss any, I apologize, guys. Again, just a little recap. We are on Chrome instead of Firefox for this one. And apparently we're not seeing your comments come in here. So I'm going to do this yeah, the old good. way. Um, but moving forward, we'll adjust that. So anyway, so J uh, Jason Learman says, I'm looking to purchase Diecast now because of the PPV, PPV VOD and subscriptions options. Are you truly happy with mm -hmm. it? And is it as solid as they advertise? They have been pretty solid. And if you're even broadcasting out in Southeast Asia for any reason, they've got servers overseas as well. Um, if you need to, let me know that you're going to connect with them. I can contact Greg Ellis, let you know you're coming. He's more than willing to give people the opportunity to just dig into the account for a while and see how they feel about it before you go dropping money on you know all the feature sets. So contact Greg or I can contact him for you if you need help and we can work something out. Shouldn't be a problem. And I got a lot of these people. Yeah. If you approach a lot of these sites, you'd be surprised. Me as an author, I was able to go to them and say, hey, I'm going to include you in a review of my book. Can I get some software access? And they will. But with a lot of these, they have the free access. So just go try them. Go just log in, get an account, see if you like it or not. If you don't, shut it down. Awesome. So, uh, Omar, did you see that question coming from him? Uh, from, I, from I did. Do you want to go over that one? Sure. Henry was asking, he said, oh, with all these different software platforms that we have, he said, is there any, what was the question? My question is there, will it be a limit to the stream on Facebook in terms of the um, time? The only thing you have to worry about on Facebook is they do normally have an eight hour time limit in most cases for game streamings, especially. Um, there are ways to get past to the 24 hour stream, but with the pandemic thing going on right now, I think Facebook shut that down completely because it just wasn't going to work for the server access at this time. Too many people streaming, not enough not enough hardware to keep up. Right, right. Understood. So I, I had a it, question. It'll come back, I'm sure. It'll come back to 24-hour streaming on Facebook, but it's continuous. It will not be, once the 24 hours is reached, it refreshes and starts over. So you only get 24 hours. Like if you saw the oh, yeah. app being born, the giraffe was going to be born on YouTube and Facebook also streamed it out the same way. It was a continuous stream before the baby was born, but it wasn't replayable past 24 hours. Gotcha. So I have a question for you. We kept saying um, four square interface. Can we dive into what does that exactly mean? Um, kind of what you're looking at right now. You see three now. If you had one more, the original platforms, when WebRTC first came out, a lot of these uh, web conferencing softwares as well were built on a idea that you put four people in a grid. And they discovered that having four was kind of the sweet spot. And yet 
a lot of these softwares keep adding more and more guests because they are asked to. And it's great to have them in the green room, like Omar has the ability to do here on StreamYard and save them uh -huh. down below before. But you get more than five or six people on camera with open mics and focus assist, which what happens with that is when I talk, my mic is focused on and it fades out the other two mics briefly while I speak. And that's why you get that overlap. If you don't have full duplex available, which is like talking on the telephone where you can talk over each other all the time, that's what we would prefer to have, honestly, in an environment like this. We're adults. We should be able to talk like we do normally without somebody fading our voices out to let. <laughs> what that does is it causes people who yell to get the mic. They take control of the mic. And that was originally discovered with this four square layout. And they started to work with full duplex. But four is the sweet spot. If you want to meet with people, network with people, and become friends without ever meeting someone ever, get into some four squares with people and hang out for a while. You'll find what it means. It's really nice. A, an extraordinary experience. It really. Lila, now I'm not I'm not taking shots at all, but I'm just saying that somebody in the comments said that. All of the live streaming experts, they're a little thin up top. I'm not saying anything, but I'm wearing a hat for a reason, too. So <laughs> I like it, though, man. I, I actually have hair, and I do have a little patch back here that thinned out, and I decided, you know what, I don't want to mess with this thin crap anymore. So I did a live stream of me shaving my head on Facebook. So Oh, man, I, I know that got to the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It was fun. I got out the dog shears, and I just went right down the middle the first time and made a big track in the center. <laughs> <laughs> that that's how we it's know the brilliance is there. <laughs> yes. that's right. Got a little brain to uncover now and then. So. <laughs> now you're good. So what just, else we got? Yeah, just a reminder to the audience: we got seven minutes left. I'm trying really, really hard on this podcast with Austin and myself to keep us on time and on track. So uh, <laughs> I want to get, get done at nine. But um, yeah, so we we had that question that Austin asked. Um, Jason just replied back. Um, Real quick, he just wanted to he thanked you for the information and he's glad to know somebody else was using it. You're welcome. First hand experience from it. And he said he'll, he'll contact you after this. Um, I think that was the three primary ones. I'm going through these right now to see if I'm missing. Are any. we still sharing the screen? Am I, are you guys seeing my screen? Or no, you would have to authorize it. I'm going to stop sharing it. Right now, yeah. Coming through streaming. Sorry about that. Um, oh, I wanted to mention too, Omar, for anyone on the broadcast today. I redid my book from 2017 of best. It used to be best guide to live stream video broadcasting. It was my first hardcover book I ever produced. It was self-published. And then I rewrote it in 2020, took out a bunch of the reviews that I did for some of the software that disappeared. It's called best live guide. If you go to bestliveguide.com without the HTTPS stuff, just bestliveguide.com, enter the code free VIP all in caps and you guys can all have a copy of my book. So I'll leave that or somebody can leave that in the Facebook chat, just free VIP. And you got to put it in the cart in PayPal on that page. If it doesn't show up there, go to my website at BCB Live, look for the book download, and you'll see it. You got to put it in the cart. It's normally 10 bucks. It's a 60-some page PDF about how to build your own home studio. It's simplistic as I could possibly make it for the, uh, the newbie, let's say. But it's also pretty technically based. So it took me several months to write it back in 2017. And I think it's good for anyone that's new to streaming. Uh, it gives them an idea how these softwares work and what, it's, what it means to build a computer to stream to or stream from. So have at it. So one more time, Liam, what is it? What is the name of it? I'm going to Google this right now and show the audience. Best best live guy. Oh, well, yeah, I could bring it up on screen so you guys can see I, it. I, best, I, live I guy guy guy. best live guy, right? I know we I know we showed it on the last one. You guys remember uh, the last show V uh, Vmix did with us. We had it on there as well. Um, we'll, oh, we'll post this right. in the comments and in the days to come. This is what you should see. Yeah, I think it's what happened the last time. This is what you should see when you get out to BCB Live and actually. Oop, you're seeing my down, lower third there. And you come down to the page, you're going to see the book uh, on the screen. And right here, where it says download now for ten dollars, you're just going to want to put it in the cart. So once you do, it's going to pop up on the screen as a $10 purchase. But if you go to the discount code right here and enter free VIP and go ahead and apply that, it's going to 
chop that down to a total of zero. I do ask that I get your email so I can stay in touch with you. If you really want my book, that's the only thing I'm asking for. And then you just go ahead and agree to the terms. The only thing I ask in those terms is the fact that you don't give the book away after you got it for free. Don't give 20 copies of it away for someone else. Just give them the link and have them come pick it up. That's all I have. And then once you hit purchase, it's yours. It's a downloaded PDF that you can grab right away. And Leland, just, just to ask while we're here, the to get the most updated version, we have to go to your page, correct? Amazon will have a different, uh, the or the older version? Yeah, Amazon is an older version from 2017 that's going to have some outdated stuff in it. And they're asking for either the Kindle. If you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. But if you're getting it as a one-off, you're going to pay for the book in hardcover. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want anybody spending that kind of money on that book because it's outdated. Got it, got Understood. It. Yes. And you did a great job by giving these guys that free VIP feature on top of it. So these free resources are here. Thank you very much for providing that that resource. More and that. I hope you guys take advantage of it because it is an absolute necessary tool of what's going on in our industry right now. So yeah, definitely, definitely. So we got three minutes left. I, I just want to wrap it up. If you anybody has any last comments, Austin or Leland, if you have anything else you want to add, um, I, I will get that link from you to make sure they get it from the right page so they don't go to the wrong yep, one. Yep. Um, I went on Amazon. It, it did see it did say it did say 2017. I typed it in with your name and it popped up right. It was the first. Yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, yeah don't um, go to Amazon. Just go to my website because the Amazon is a different book. Just ignore the Amazon link. You're going to download the PDF right from the website. Nice. So yeah, again, uh, Austin or Leading, any last words you want to leave for the community before before we uh, we we end it for the night? Well, on the behalf of the AB Educate podcast, and I'm sure all of the viewers, Omar and myself, Leland, thank you very much for being extremely knowledgeable as you are and being so, so giving and forthcoming with all of this information to share amongst the community. We really appreciate your, your time, energy and effort. Thank you so much. Always my pleasure. Always Happy my pleasure. to have you here. Good to, we need as many people out here in this industry right now doing what we do best because the people need us. We're, we're seeing the fact that a lot of people are scared, nervous, and anxious over not being able to connect with people, friends, coworkers, whatever it might be. And if it only means logging into a free website to sit down for a few minutes and chat with your friends and be able to get that peace and comfort you need right now being locked down, go for it because that's what it's here for. Yes, sir. I mean, that's a double-edged sword. It's helping us on that aspect and it's, and it's preparing us for what's coming, what's coming in the field. So I love it. Yeah, I love that. Just a heads up for you guys. Uh, if you aren't aware, tomorrow, Jeff Wigan with, uh, with some collaboration with us is going to be doing a Zoom breakout around 1230. So if you guys want to kind of dive into some Zoom stuff and get a real experience to be in a Zoom room with somebody and kind of get to play with things in a Zoom room with other other users who are uh, in the same mindset as you is to learn vMix and get it going, that'll be happening tomorrow, Thursday at 1230. We're going to share it here with the community as well. And then tune in Sunday for, with us. We're going to bring in Joe from Central Control, a newer platform coming out that's a comparison to Companion, uh, some different features. And again, I want to thank the community for being here so much. I apologize on my end for that mistake with the uh, commenting here. Um, it seems that it may be just a Chrome versus Firefox issue, um, but I apologize for that. Uh, again, my third time, I know. I don't need to do that, but um, uh, I, I just want to oh, say you know what you might need to do, Omar. I don't mean to interrupt, but what you may need to do is go reinitialize the app on Facebook under your page for that where you're broadcasting to and see oh. where the StreamYard app. It sometimes after 60 days or 30 days, it has to be refreshed in order Got to it. That makes okay. sense. That makes right. sense. check that, see if that doesn't work. So there you go for guys who are doing this or similarly out there. There's a, a good tip there. Um, we have a a, a private uh, stream thing that we do to kind of demo things out that I did not do, which Ed immediately emailed me on and says, hey, why didn't you demo this? Uh, so <laughs> that's my fault. But uh, I want to thank you, Leland, for being here so much. I I, I want to encourage other people who are, are as smart as Leland, who are, are as giving as he is to come on this platform, help communicate with the community, help the engineers and the techs out there who and the stagehands who are trying to stay involved, stay connected, just like you were saying, and, and keep learning from us you know we, we we can only grow as fast as you guys want to let us and honestly it, it's it's amazing that we have gotten so many talented and highly skilled people to come on here and talk with us and be with us and just interact with us uh all, all volunteering their time and, and everything with us you know austin as well we've been multiple times with us already talks in the background um you know i, I highly appreciate that myself <laughs> coming from a coming, well you know coming from a video side from from unfortunately miami like everybody says 
Uh, there's a lot of guys down here. Don't give me the face. There's a lot of guys down here who, you know, I feel as video engineers, we 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 get a little more stubborn as we get older, and it's very hard to move up. And uh, I just wanted to provide a platform where that is an opportunity for you to learn and do stuff. And, and I think I thank you a lot, and, and everybody else who's been here, and everybody who'll be in the future. That you know, I'm thinking that you guys are 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 embracing this mentality and kind of helping the community, you know, grow together. Yeah, and I know we're, we're over time already, but I just want to say the one thing I'm seeing happen is there's a there's a core of us that have been in live streaming for several years that were never affiliated with the guys in AV who have been doing it physically for all these other years. And now there's this coming together of two different sides of the planet yes. that are saying, wow, we didn't know you could do that. And yep. so we're all <laughs> learning from each other right now, and it's a really cool thing that's taking place. Yes, sir. More power to it, man. Yes, sir. All right, well, <laughs> All right, guys. Well, All good right, man, it's been a pleasure. You guys have a great evening, and we'll see you guys next week, Wednesday, at 8 o'clock. Take care. Take it easy. Later.